Well, 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 here we go. It's time, baby. This is the XFL. And going forward, there will be custom thumbnails and stuff like that. As far as, you know, like, you know, for the XFL, just for the XFL. Um, but, yeah. Welcome, everybody, to Big Boy Sports. If you haven't noticed already and you haven't been, you've been under a rock or something like that, um, well, this is a channel that covers, you know, football, basketball, lacrosse, um, wrestling, mixed martial arts, UFC, boxing a little bit sometimes, you know, all that good stuff. But that's all that, that's all that other stuff that you can go see on the about section in my channel page. Uh, but yeah, let's talk about the XFL. It has returned after 19 years, after their very first failure of a season back in 2001. It's a reboot. It's a new thing. And we got a bunch of goodies to start off week number one, to start off the XFL season, to start off a new spring league. Now, this time around, you know, the spring league, um, this could be a resounding success or a resounding failure. Um, spring leagues just do not have the same success that other leagues have had, you know, like the NFL had or like the Arena Football League had for 30 years until it died all of a sudden. But this time, I think the XFL has it. There's still some things, the rules that I don't really like, but most of the rules are pretty fine. Trying to speed up the game, and that is all fun and great. So the very first XFL game is the Seattle Dragons taking on DC Defenders at 1 p.m. Central Time, 2 p.m. Eastern on ABC. That's right, ABC. I know, y'all are shocked, right? Oh my god, ABC is broadcasting against... XFL games, yeah, the XFL's deal with um, ABC and, and, and ESPN and along with Fox and Fox Sports 1 and all their related properties, it's going to be fun, it's going to be a fun season, man, um, and then at 4 p.m. Central Time, 5 p.m. Um, Eastern, it'll be the Los Angeles Wildcats taking on the Houston Roughnecks, um, and that, this is also going to be very interesting. But then, 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 the very next day, that's right, it's two games a day. Um, it's on Sunday, February 9th. It'll be Tampa Bay taking on New York at 2 p.m. Again, 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central Time on Fox. And then the other game will be my, yeah, that's right, my Dallas Renegades at, at 5 p.m or 4 p.m. Central Time, taking on the St. Louis Battlehawks. Oh, boy. We have a bunch of goodies, man. We have a bunch of things to talk about. Um, so, let's just take a look at some things, you know. Um, yeah, so, you know, this, this is the first new reboot season. 40 games will be played, plus the three playoff games in late April. And, you know, it'll be great. It'll be fantastic, man. It'll be fun. Um, the draft, of course, was held on October 15th. And stuff like that, you know. But all these teams are going to be fine. They're going to do good. We're going to see them. And we're going to be happy. You know, there's been some preseason games already. Um, but, you know, that's all preseason stuff that wasn't shown on network television, I don't think. Um. But now I'm going to look at these rosters and stuff like that. And, you know, it's going to be fun. So, head coach. Uh, the first team that I'm looking at here is the L.A. Wildcats. And the L.A. Wildcats coach is Winston Moss. Um, and we're going to look at their roster real quick. Um, so some highlights here for their roster is um, Josh Johnson, the quarterback. Um uh, He's had a little rough and tumble season. He's had a little rough and tumble a couple of times in the NFL. Um, but here he is doing what he needs to do. Um, 
looking more into the rosters and stuff. And um, there's going to be a bunch of guys that are either unsigned or on injured reserve. There's also Nick Novak. Um, Y'all don't know who Nick Novak is as a kicker. So, you know, um, so keep an eye on those two players, of course. And for the Houston side of things, which we'll look at right now, um, I don't know anything about Woodston Ross, to be completely honest with you. But June Jones, the run and shoot aficionado. Um, we're, we're doing run and shoot out here, boys. It's going to be fun, man. Um, so, Connor Cook. Y'all remember Connor Cook from Michigan State? Yeah, yeah, he, he, can, he can do something. He can do something. But, um, and there are some other guys in the roster that... You know, look very interesting, um, like Cam Phillips or Sammy Coates at the wide receiver position. Um, looking even more forward, there's a bunch of unsigned guys here. Um, as far as I know, these were active. These were, uh, yeah, um, yeah. So keep an eye on those two players. We'll take a look at the Seattle roster real quick here. Um, next up, playing at Century Link Field in Seattle, you know, Jim Zorn. Oh boy, Jim Zorn. What an interesting guy that is, man. That is going to be very interesting, let me tell you that. Uh, take a good look at their roster. Brandon Silvers. Y'all remember Brandon Silvers for the AAF? Yeah, he's he's and Kenneth Farrell's also here as a running back, so this is going to be very interesting, you know? Um, very interesting. Um, but there's another guy here that I have fond memories of. If you watched Navy football for four years, those the, that 2012 to 2015 stretch, y'all remember Keenan Reynolds as a wide receiver. Oh, boy. That could be very interesting with the double pass because that man can run and he can throw as we saw all four years at Navy. Um, as far as other players go, not really highlighting a lot on defense. Um, don't see a lot here that really sticks out at me. On the defensive side, unless Malachi Jones counts, um, as far as, you know, um, the defense goes. Um, Seattle, they're taking on DC, so we'll take a look at the DC roster. Here, they're playing at Audi Field down in old Washington D.C., um, and their head coach is Pep Hamilton, who is a guy that I have not really, you know, um, not really heard about too much. But apparently, he worked with Andrew Luck and stuff like that. But we all know who's the quarterback. For DC, Cardale Jones, baby, Cardale Jones. Oh boy. And in, and in the running back stable, there's a bunch of running backs here. Um, but the highlight is Donnell Pumphrey, that guy at San Diego State ran for 2,000 yards a couple times at least, I want to say. Um, as far as tight ends go, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot here. Um, Raheem Moore on the defensive side. For you know the DC defenders, so um, yeah, not a lot else here to go over there. Um, let's take a look at the New York Guardians roster here. Um, and Kevin Gilbride is their head coach and GM. Yeah, up here, and you know, um, XFL co head coaches are also the GM, so yeah. Um, so we all remember him for the Giants, right? Yeah, that was that was an interesting time, but the quarterbacks are very interesting for New York. We got Luis Perez and Matt McGloin as a backup. Oh boy, this is gonna be very interesting to see, man. Let me tell you that. Um, I'm not sure if there's a quarterback battle going on or what, <laughs> but we'll find out. You know who gets the start and stuff like that. Here's an interesting little tidbit on high receivers. Do y'all remember Joe Horn? <laughs> His son, Joe Horn Jr., is here. So he's on the New York Guardians roster um, as a wide receiver. 
And looking ahead here, on the defensive side, not a lot else here. Um, also, not a lot on you know the defensive side. Period. <sighs> you have to excuse me, um, but yeah, uh, you know. So here's the Tampa Bay Vipers. They're playing at the um, Raymond James Stadium. You know, the home of the USF Bulls and the Tampa Bay Bucks. They are head coach by Mark Tressman. Y'all remember Mark Tressman, right? Yeah, he he's he's an interesting guy, let me tell you that. Um, the Tampa Bay Bikers roster consists of Aaron Murray, quarterback. Very interesting guy. Um, he was in the booth for college football games for the longest time after, you know, not really panning out in the NFL. Uh, but here he is, he's getting his chance here in Tampa Bay, and he should be able to do something. Now, they're listing Quentin Flowers at running back here. Um, as far as my list goes, I'm not sure if these rosters are completely official, but Quentin Flowers, former USF quarterback, is being listed as a running back. Interesting stuff right there. Um, let's see. Not a lot here as far as um, wide receivers go. But that was very interesting to me. There's also a bunch of guys that are either injured or unsigned or whatever as well. And we'll get to the Battle Hawks here. The next group um, playing at the old St. Louis Rams Stadium. Now it's called the Dome at America Center. Um, and they're head coached by Jonathan Hayes. He's a guy that I've not heard about at all, so don't even, don't even, you know, like, try me with that. But, Taylor Heineke and Nick Fitzgerald are their quarterbacks. Very interesting stuff there, man. Uh, I'm not sure if that's going to be a quarterback battle as well, uh, but who knows. Um, as far as, you know, like, other stuff that's going on, Oh boy, Marquette King. Y'all remember Marquette King, Raider, former Raiders punter, big guy, could do could do no wrong. So that'll be interesting to see, you know, with new punting rules and stuff like that, how he's going to fare in the grand scheme of things. And finally, my Dallas Renegades, who are playing at the old Globe Life Park in Arlington, which is basically now a football stadium um, because the Texas Rangers, who I don't care for, have moved to um, another um, field called Globe Life Field. And, well, we're air raiding it, boys, because we got Bob Stoops as the, as the head coach, baby. We got him. We got him as the damn coach. It's going to be fun, man. And we already know, well, I already know, that Landry Jones is injured, so it'll be Philip Nelson as the starter, but we got some pretty interesting things as far as my Renegades go. Cameron Artis Payne, Lance Dunbar. Oh boy, y'all remember Lance Dunbar. If y'all were Dallas fans, y'all remember Lance Dunbar. Did not really like the guy too much. Um, Gerard Hurd, you know, former Texas quarterback uh, for like a year before he got converted to like a wide receiver, stuff like that. Um, Looking, looking down here, not a lot to say about the defense. There's just not a lot here that I know about as far as these defensive players go, which is kind of tragic. And there it is. Uh, these were last, and so this one, this roster was last updated on January 27th. So um, there's about 10 guys unsigned, 52 are active, four are inactive. So. But most of these guys that I haven't said on the roster are probably going to be on the roster. Some of these guys that I've really highlighted are probably going to be on the roster. But I think the most important thing here is, as I'm going back to the schedule right now, I think the most important thing here is to put a good product on the field. The XFL that wants to survive cannot disappoint again like it did in 2001. It cannot. Cannot do so. So, with that being said, everybody, this is the XFL. Are you ready? So, Renegades fans, rise up. Everybody else, rise up too, baby. We're here. We're ready. 
and we're just gonna have a good time this week. Um, now, I don't know if I'm gonna do like individual team by team previews and stuff like that. Considering that I just went over um, the rosters and stuff like that. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, uh, I've got nothing else really to say here except let's have a great season, everybody. We're here until April 26th um, with the XFL stuff, and you know, it's gonna be a fun time, and I'm ready. I'm so excited to watch this league. Uh, and we'll see if it keeps my interest gauged um, until, you know, until the indoor football season starts and NBA playoffs starts up. We'll see if it continues, you know, to be interesting even when March Madness goes as well. So yeah, that's gonna do it, everybody. Y'all take care, and we'll see you guys very soon. Peace.